Hey guys, this is Kelsey from Sweetbar Farm. I have a backlog of goat milk building up in my milk fridge. So today, Maylee and I are gonna be making queso blanco, which is a super easy cheese for first time or beginner cheese makers to start with. All you use is heat and acid to denature the proteins and then um, wait for the curd to set and strain it out. So it's pretty straightforward. There's no bacterial cultures and um, you start by heating your milk up to 195 degrees Fahrenheit on direct heat. So no double boiler, just right in the pot on the stove. So I'm going to get that started now and I'll show you what happens once we get it at temperature. I'm just going to keep a close eye on this, stirring it regularly um, so that we don't scorch the bottom since it's on direct heat and not a double boiler. All right, I'll check in with you later. What temperature is it, May? It's 202 okay. over what it should be. Yep, so the goal was 195 to 200. So we pulled it off the heat. Um, you can put the thermometer down now. So the next step is to stir in the acid. All right, so since I did two gallons of milk, goat milk, I'm going to add a cup and a half of lemon juice. And we're just going to trickle it in there um, about a tablespoon at a time. I'll pour while Mealy stirs. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And um, then we're going to let it sit for about 20 minutes for the curd to separate. But right now, this step is called curdling the milk. So the heat has broken down some of the proteins in the milk, and the acid will break down more, and that's what causes the milk to curdle. So when you're stirring, you want to go down and up very slowly and gently. The curd is really fragile in this cheese, so you need to be really gentle when you work with it. When will it start to... We should start to see chunks in there. There's just so much froth on top at the moment, it's a little hard to see. Yeah. See, see this little curd starting to form in the spoon? Yeah. That's, that's cool. what we want. Cool. Oh yeah, they're getting chunkier now, see that? Mm-hmm, so keep going very gently. You're right, you can see that. it's so cool. It is amazing. It's like so cool how they just go like from milk to like mm -hmm. that. Big one? Yeah, lots of big ones. Look at it. Yeah. It's already starting to chunk up. Good. All right, so Maylee is going to stir this for about a minute longer and then we're going to let it sit and not stir it at all for at least 20 minutes. Okay. We want to see the curd separating from the whey. So the whey was that yellowish liquid and, and the this is curds are obviously the solid part. So we want to give it a little bit of time to just work its magic. We'll check back in with you guys in 20 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 25 minutes and our whey has separated. So that's the yellow liquid on top. And then hopefully down underneath, we've got some nice thick curds. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's the good stuff. So the next step, we need to separate the curds from the whey and cool the curds down. So Maylee's gonna use a ladle very carefully, she's gonna scoop out the curds, put them into a colander we lined with cheesecloth. And um, it's important, make sure your colander stands up from the bottom of the bowl that you're draining in so that it's not just soaking in that hot way. We wanna cool the curds down and we may even try 
We got two colanders set up to accommodate the big batch of cheese. So maybe we'll try rinsing one with cold water and leaving one the same. Mm -hmm. uh, Feel it. Yeah, and those curds are still very fragile, so Maylee's going to be very gentle as she works with it. Oh, it looks pretty good. It does look really good. So we'll let, once we get the curd all ladled up and out of the pot, we'll let these sit on the counter and drain for about another 20 minutes. Um, and then we're going to use some of it, we'll press into a form to make like a, a paneer or a queso blanco, uh, a hard cheese that we can slice and either fry up um, or just eat with crackers. And then the rest of it will leave a little bit wetter and that's ricotta. We yeah. have a favorite ricotta pancake recipe <laughs> that we'll probably make tomorrow morning for breakfast. Oh yeah, probably. Uh, when it cools, we'll feed it to the pigs. Okay. Pigs okay, love cheese making day. Mm -hmm. Why don't you switch and put the next ladle into the okay. other colander? You get them spread out a little bit, it'll help them cool faster. getting harder to find the curds. Yeah. I wonder if using something like this to scoop would work better. Yeah. Go fishing. We totally could have done three gallons of this. But why didn't you? I was worried I wouldn't have enough space to drain it all. Oh yeah, you should have done three gallons of this. A bunch of lip way left over in there. Yeah. Pigs will like it though. Pigs will love it. Lift one up and show us what's underneath. Aha. So there's more of the way that's draining out. Yeah, and then this one. Let's make sure it's not. It is hot under there. Yes. Here. This one might be deeper. Yeah, yes. I'm gonna dump this one into the pot. We'll let these sit for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll save some of it as it is to make pancakes with tomorrow and the rest we'll press into a mold to make queso blanco. Okay guys, so I've let the curd drain for about 20 minutes and it looks pretty dry. It looks good. It's not like super mushy. It's actually pretty firm to the touch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour any of the whey that's underneath the colanders back in the pot of whey over here for the pigs. And then I'm going to put it all in one bowl. I'm going to stir in a little bit of salt. So since I did two gallons of milk to start with, I'm going to do about half a teaspoon of salt just to help give it a little bit of flavor. Since this is a quick cheese with no bacterial culture in it, it doesn't have a ton of flavor. So the salt will help. There we go. We like to eat the cheese that's pressed with like jam on crackers, honey. That's a big, a favorite way. You could also do it with savory things like um, pesto on top would be really good with crackers. Uh, and then the stuff that we don't press we just put, um, use as ricotta in our ricotta pancake recipe, which is super good here. So I've got all my curd in here. So it's not a ton of yield from two gallons of milk. There's probably, I don't know, I'm going to guess maybe five, six cups of cheese. Not a ton. Um, so it's a manageable amount. So I'm going to stir in my salt and then I'm going to put some of it into my um, cheese press here. 
to form a small wheel of cheese that we'll use um, as pressed cheese, so queso blanco. And then the rest I'll just put in a jar right from here to use tomorrow morning for pancakes. All right, so salt. I'm just adding half a teaspoon of just regular iodized table salt. And I'll stir that in really good and kind of help blend up the cheese curds so they're all, the texture is a little bit more consistent. Okay. So I'm just stirring in the salt, trying to kind of break up the bigger clumps in here to get that salt mixed evenly throughout. The rest of this is going to go into my cheese press. Press isn't the right word. Um, form, maybe, is the better word. I'll show you what it looks like. It's pretty straightforward. So, I've got uh, this bottom part has a uh, mesh bottom, so weight can drain out. So what I'll do is I'll put a piece of cheesecloth in here this so only liquids will leave none of the solid curd will drain out and then I'll put my curd in here this goes on top and then I'll put a weight on top of it and it's gonna hang out in this bowl to catch any liquid that drains and it's gonna sit in the fridge overnight like that and then tomorrow we will have a wheel of queso blanco cheese lid goes on top and now for the weight. Actually, I should fold this over. Tuck it all in nice and pretty so we don't get any runaway cards in the night. All right, and then my handy dandy big jar of tomato sauce will be the weight. So this will just set on there in the fridge overnight and slowly it'll knit and form a wheel of cheese. So that's how that's gonna hang out in the fridge tonight. Tomorrow, we'll show you guys what the wheel of cheese looks like, okay? I let the cheese sit overnight under the weight. So now we're ready to pull out our queso blanco and see what it looks like. Right, there it is, a neat little wheel of cheese. Um, it didn't knit together very well. You can still see the individual curds, so. As an aspiring cheese maker, I'm not super pleased with the look of it. I think a heavier weight would have worked better, and I think I should have pressed it sooner. There's not hardly any way in the bottom, so I think I waited too long to put it into the form. So next time I would do that sooner, but it's definitely a solid mass so it's just about snack time for the kids so I'll cut off a wedge of this to serve to the kids at snack time or maybe actually I'll give them each their own wedge they'll think that's cool so there you go neat little wedge of cheese it doesn't have like you can see in the center it's pressed nice and solid together, but towards the edges, you can see like individual curds. Um, it sticks together pretty well as like a single unit, but as I perfect my cheese making skills, that's something I'll be working on. I think I probably need a heavier weight on it to help knit those curds together. And maybe pulling the cheesecloth tighter around it too would help. But it's delicious and we want to try out frying it up. That's something special you can do with 
queso blanco because of the type of cheese that it is, you can um, fry it and it won't melt. So we thought that would be something fun to try because we didn't need that cutting board after all. There. A nice thick slice of cheese. Spray it with a little canola oil. It's the same pan I, I fried up green beans for dinner, so I figured I'd use it for the cheese while it was out. All right, pan's hot. On goes the cheese. So what does it taste like? It's very good, but it doesn't have a lot of flavor, I think. A little bit of lemony from the lemon juice. It literally tastes like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a good way to extract the protein and the good stuff from the milk when you have a lot of milk and you need to do something with it fast. The kids love to eat it with um, raspberry yeah. crunch jam on crackers. You'd have to have yeah, jam you want to add some jam on a cracker. Like yeah, or like other cheese. Sure, or even like a pesto or something on top would be good. Or some savory green bean and garlic oil, olive oil yep. in a pan. And Ivan makes his own pickles too. Refrigerator pickles. Mm. Ooh, that looks good. Yeah, Ivan's refrigerator pickles are very good too. I bet this would be good. Huh? And places where you use tofu. I know you're not a tofu fan, but I bet that chopped up in pad thai or even on a caprese salad would be really good. Ever since I was a baby, I, my aunt used to try to feed me tofu. and I think I remember, I was probably like two years old, and I think I remember it was like my first memory, choking on tofu. <laughs> I don't remember much, but I remember choking on tofu. Mm. The refrigerator pickles are very good. I think this cheese is done. Should we try it? Maybe you want to try a piece? Sure. It looks melty. Yeah, it's soft. And hot. Maybe crackers would be a good idea. Oh, well, yeah, so That makes it way better. Still doesn't have much flavor, but. Yeah, but mixed into like a pasta dish or something. That'd be real nice. But we could season it, you know, while it's frying. I'm thinking like maybe some dill. Yeah. Maybe jam. So you can, um, at the part in the recipe where we stirred in the salt, you can stir in herbs and seasonings and make your cheese that way too. That might be fun to try with our next batch. It is. It is good. The gout jam. Looks like it's snack time. <laughs> we just ate dinner. It doesn't need jam. I can put jam on it. Hey! Do you want some adobo on it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is one of our favorite seasonings this year. We're putting this on just about everything, it seems like. Adobo all for the seasoning. It's good. I'm sure the jam will make it. It's really good. Jam makes everything better. Yep, true. What is that? Homemade raspberry currant jam? Mm -hmm. There's more raspberries and currants that you can go pick and make more jam. 
I Why pick the raspberry. Every day they go out to the berry patch, and every night the berry buckets are empty. Oh, berries, okay? Literally, what I'm going to do is the berry pot. I just said, it feels like a square pancake. Oh. That is pretty good. Kelsey, you better do it so he doesn't. Let's pull these pieces over here, will be the adobo pieces, and we can always make more. But that mm -hmm. will be the adobo corner, okay? Can I put some on for you? Mm -hmm. Didn't we put a dobo on the old chick turkey for last year? Good Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah, I don't know. You can season it with anything. Kind of it's yeah. really good. I like it. All right. What is it called? Queso blanco. Queso blanco. Oh. <laughs> Two thumbs up. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>